You are watching Limited Resources Draft Series on MTGO Academy featuring Marshall Sutcliffe. Hey guys, Marshall here from Limited Resources doing another video here on MTGOacademy.com. And we are underway. More cube action for you this week. Um, this pack's bad. I think I think these two cards are the cards that I'm really looking at as far as first pickables, and I think I'll go with the Gilded Lotus just because you know it's it's colorless. It keeps us pretty open, and uh, we can do some pretty busted stuff with the Gilded Lotus. I mean, eh, we could take a Hero of Oxid Ridge, but even that's not like a, an amazing first pick card for the red deck. Yeah, we'll just take Gilded Lotus and sort of see where things go from there. There's a lot of different directions that we can go. And uh, this pack is also yeah, not very exciting. I mean, there's an Avacyn's Pilgrim, which is a nice little mana mana ramping dork. Nature's lore can grab us a forest or whatever and help us ramp out some mana. Um, these two cards, Minus Desire and Time Spiral, are kind of powerful, but they're pretty hard to harness. Like... They're not just necessarily good on their own. Uh, you need to be able to do something else with them. And again, even for Mono Red, which I don't like to draft anyway. I just find it boring. But I will poke in there every once in a while and draft it. I like drafting the version that blows up lands. That That's fun for me. Uh, maybe with a few black cards in there for that same purpose. But I'm just going to take the Pilgrim here and just uh, make some mana, I suppose. All right, well... If we're in the mana making mood, we could also be in the Emrakul casting mood. Though hard casting Emrakul is very difficult. Uh, <laughs> you need a lot of things to go right to actually just generate 15 mana. Um, now there's a lot of other ways to get Emrakul into play. Um, he's not good at being reanimated, but there's ways you can sort of cheaty face him into play that, that work really well. Um, but they're pretty tough, and we don't have any of them. So I'm actually just going to take this elf here. Um, I think I just don't really want to branch off in any other color, and I don't think any of these cards, like Nicol Bolas is sweet. Um, if it comes back, maybe we'll play it. But I think we just play um, simple to start with here. Two elves and a gilded lotus. At least we know what we're trying to do. We're trying to make big stuff, just hopefully stuff that we can actually reliably cast at some point during the course of the game as uh yeah what's it called emrakul just it doesn't fit that bill this pack is pretty nice here there's an explore which i like quite a bit there's a path to exile which is just i think i think that both path and plow uh source of plowshares path and plow i think that they're both underrated in the cube even though they're really probably just the two best removal spells people still just don't take them highly enough because they uh Ten, they, they can kill almost anything, and that's like really, really powerful for the decks that are looking to control the board or, or you know manage what your opponents are doing. These cards are just the best possible way to do it. Hopefully that's not what we're trying to do. I'm going to take this Warm Power Stone here. The other option, I think, is Edric. I think we could take Edric or Warm, Warm Power Stone, but I think Edric might come back. There's going to be four cards left in the pack, and this is a fairly stacked pack, so I think we can stay... Well, A, one color, and B, ramping. And uh, I'm going to stay in green. You might think I'll take the elves, but I'm not. Um, this is where I will, will diverge off from our, our plan of just taking mana ramp and elves, and that's with acidic slime. You need cards like this. Not only um, are they great to have just as a toolbox card for killing just a million different forms of problem permanence, they're also incentive. I mean, the reason why you want to ramp is so you can cast cards like this way earlier than you normally would be able to and, and really just kind of get people. Um, this is an interesting choice. Normally I think I'd just take the Necrotal, but um, I'm going to take Decree of Justice. With all this uh, extra mana that we have, that could be pretty good in our deck. And uh, I've actually come around on white a bit in this cube. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of it in the last, or maybe it was two iterations ago of the cube, but I like it now. Uh, it seems to have sort of shaped up a bit. And along those same lines, I'm going to take this Blade Splicer here, I think. Simic Sky Swallower is definitely something that we'd have on our radar as well. But uh, maybe maybe this is just a color combo that we need to use. I like a Mirror Angel. I'll take that. All right, so we got from our opening pack, we got Thalia, Guardian of Thraben back, and there's also a Chroma's Vengeance. A Chroma's Vengeance is interesting uh, because it has cycling. 
So you can sort of backup plan it pretty easily if it's not what you want to do. But man, I'm pretty worried about blowing up basically like every card we've drafted so far. So I'm going to take Thalia and we'll see. She might make the cut. She might not. Uh, this seems like a good time to pick up a card like Putrefy. Savannah Alliance does not not really what I want to be doing. I want to be doing bigger things than that. So for me, it's either Putrefy or Battlefield Forge. Battlefield Forge also is a is a pretty reasonable option to pick up here as well. Uh, Putrefy is just in case we dip over into black. I think I'm actually actually just going to take the Forge since we just don't really know where we're going. All right, there is Nicol Bolas, though. We seem to have, have gone a bit of a different direction there. Um, what's the pick here? It's either Into the Royal or Aurelia's Fury. We did just take this red source, so Fury's a card we could take. Why don't we take it? I've never ran it in the cube, to be honest. All right, I'm going to take Rugged, Rugged Prairie to keep this splash alive. I mean, if we have a ton of mana, I don't know. That seems good. I mean, the card's really powerful. Hasn't really found a home yet in... Uh, in standard or anything, but Aurelia's Fury, jeez, I mean, if you read X damage, any way you choose among any number of creatures and or players, just wherever you want. And then on top of it, there's extra bonus where you can shut off the, their ability to cast spells or, and you can tap their creatures so they can't attack. It's just a really flexible, powerful spell, but you do need a lot of mana to make it work. All right, sweet. We got two different choices here. Aven Mind Sensor or Silverblade Paladin. I'm going to go with the Mind Sensor here. I think the Paladin's a little bit better of a card, but I think the Mind Sensor is going to be a little better in our deck. I'm going to take Smash, Smash, uh, Smash to Smithereens here because there's a slight chance that we play it, but even better, it just hits Worn Power Stone and Gilded Lotus. And If you've ever played against the red deck and they get to smash one of your artifacts to Smithereens, uh, it's brutal. Really, really brutal. They just, uh, they get so far ahead. And here's Imposing Sovereign, which we might actually run. All right, pack two is nice for us, actually. Armageddon, Angel of Trinity, Sublime Archangel. There's a Route as well, and a Genesis Wave along with Fertile Ground. Hmm, this is interesting. So I think I'm going to risk it a little bit and take one of these white cards over here. But I actually want to get this Genesis Wave back. Because I think Genesis Wave is going to be pretty sweet in a deck like this. So with if that's if that's the case, let's just assume that we can get that back. Uh, do we want Sublime Archangel, Angel of Serenity, or Armageddon? Sublime Archangel is a more potent package. It only costs four mana, and it really adds a ton of pressure to the board. Armageddon's interesting. We've got Elves, Worn Power Stone, Gilded Lotus. Like, we could pretty easily power out some uh, some mana, non-land mana sources, and then just Geddon. Yeah, why don't we do that? That sounds like the most powerful option, I think, for this deck. Okay, what do we have? We have Wood Elves, which can go grab us a land and keep the ramp flowing, or we have an ever-flowing Chalice, which has a similar role where we can just try to make a ton of mana and dump it into, like, our X spells we have here or whatever. Um, yeah, I'll just take the Chalice this time, I guess. I, I really like Wood Elves, but I think the Chalice is probably a little bit better in this deck um, because it, it makes mana itself, and, like, if we're going to... Um, if we're going to try to max out and go big, like, I'm really... <laughs> I'm really hoping that we get back that, uh... What's it called? The, uh... Genesis wave. I think that's where I want to be. Yeah, no, no worries. If you guys want to get an invite to the clan, it's very easy to do. Just send me a message here on Magic Online. You can also leave me a message if I'm not on there, and uh, and I'll get you an invite. The only rules, you probably already know this. You can't be a jerk, and you got to love magic. Real simple. Bloodbraid Elf, Eureka is a possibility, though this really doesn't feel like a Eureka deck to me at this point. Or early in pack two, it is possible that that turns around. Um, I could take Clifftop Retreat, but I think I'm just going to take Bloodbraid here. Um, I don't really feel like I'm passing anything major. And if we do end up splashing red, we've already got two free splashes, and we might get back that, that Clifftop Retreat, which would make it three free splashes. And I like that. Yeah, any more mana we get, 
is great. Big stuff is still great. I want to try to stick to uh, to white green, though. I have to say the green hasn't really been flowing much. We picked up those elves early in that slime as well, so you know we really haven't picked up a ton of green stuff since then. But it's okay. We don't need that much. Okay. A Johnny Entreat. <laughs> we could go super deep and try to go Entreat for a million. I've, you know, I don't think I've ever ran Entreat in the cube before. I may be wrong about that, but I don't think I have. Uh, a Johnny, though, is probably just a better card in this spot because it can, uh, we have quite a few creatures that it interacts pretty well with and it puts pressure on control decks uh, at an early stage of the game. But you know what? I feel like going big today. We're, we're entreating some angels. I don't care. All right. What powerful toys do we have here? Uh, we've definitely got some. Moloku is very strong. Lotus Bloom's interesting. Another card I never really won. Maybe we'll just run that. Maybe we'll just try all the cards that like I've run maybe one or two times, haven't been super impressed by. Like Lotus Bloom doesn't really impress me that much. All right, I like picking this up. Oh, man, Strip Mine and Garrick. Oh, this is actually interesting. Archangel of Thune's pretty powerful in a deck like this. I mean, we're going to be making tokens, and Archangel can really go off at the five mana spot, but I'm going to actually just take Garrick here. I just think it's a better card overall. It's more versatile. does a lot for what we want to be doing. Sneak Attack, I could splash it, but we don't really have anything to sneak in. Probably just going to take this soldier here. I don't like stunted growth that much. Fire spout's not bad, though. It does kill a lot of our creatures. Yeah, I'll just take the soldier. Soldier's kind of a pain. Ooh. Sword supply shares. A Johnny Goldmane. Again, decent because we can be somewhat tokeny here. We've got Garrick, Blade Splicer, and uh, Myria Angel, but I'm going to take Swords of Plowshares. I talked about it a few uh, at the beginning, and this is why. Wow, so we just casually get everything we wanted back. Looks like we're in good colors here. Um, but yeah, hell with it. I'm taking Genesis Wave. We're just going big, big, big here. Uh, Vines of Vastwood or Boros Garrison. I don't really know why I need to open myself up. I could even just take a Burst Lightning here. Yeah, I'll just take a Burst Lightning for the Splash. Um... You know, ideally, we don't even have to start any of this stuff, but sometimes you do. Um, Grunt, no. Kami of Ancient Law or Ratchet Bomb is an interesting thing. I'm going to take the Ratchet Bomb, I guess. It can help deal with things that we, we can't normally. Jeez, these are some powerful cards that go this late in the pack. Flagstones goes well with Armageddon. Grip, I don't think we're really going to need. I think it's a little redundant in the cube. Uh, probably just take Treetop Village here. Yeah. Man, I can't... I have to, like, shield my eyes from seeing that nearly last pick. Uh, Enclave Cryptologist, so that's just... Ugh. But a Chroma Angel of Wrath? Yeah, we might even play it. Like, especially if we end up cutting our red splash. Or if it ends up being, like, not as free as we hoped. But yeah, the green's not really here. I mean, we're we're clearly... I mean, the Genesis wave came back. That doesn't really mean that much. <clears throat> so I think what I want is more ramp and more tokens. And I like what I see here. Definitely going to take Avenger of Zendikar. Uh, yeah, it's tokens and it's a ramp target, so it fits kind of what I wanted. Um, what do we hope to get back? Search for Tomorrow or Spear of Heliod would both be very nice for this deck. Uh, Flint Hoof Boar, not so much. So, yeah, if one of those two come back, then we're going to be pretty happy about it. Right. Wow. This pack is pretty insane. Control Magic and Treachery in the same pack, but we don't really have much of a choice. We're just slamming Elspeth here. Uh, fits, our, fits what we want to do. Yeah. Easy choice for us, but that pack was pretty insane. Um, all right, here's an interesting one. There's a Fleece Main line, which is actually in our two primary colors. There's also, though, Obstinate Bailoth Survival of the Fittest. Let's see, what are we surviving away? What I look for when I think about Survival of the Fittest is if we can abuse the graveyard, which we can't, or if we... Um, if we have a toolbox type deck where we can go get like different answers to different things. Um, and so far we 
don't really. Yeah, we just kind of don't. So then the other option I could take here is Ranger of Eos, which is interesting because it gets, uh, I actually have targets for it. I think that might come back. I'm going to take Journey to Nowhere here. I really, really want to make sure that we have a way to kill creatures. Like, I think that we'll get the Fleece, lane, fleece Main Lion back or something along those lines, and that'll be fine. Uh, Rude Awakening is a decent thing to ramp into, though. I feel like with all this stuff, we're actually fine on ramp, so I'm going to take Restoration Angel out of this pack. Oh, maybe I should take the Pristine Talisman, actually. Hmm, I don't want eight and a half tails, but Pristine Talisman's interesting here. Because it gets us another another step up the, the ramp ladder, which is pretty good for us. Because we didn't pick up um, you know, any of the really powerful ones. We don't have uh, a Basalt Monolith or a Grim Monolith or a, what's it called, uh, Thran Dynamo. Yeah, I think I'm actually just going to take Pristine Talisman out of that pack. I like that. Relic Warder, Boon Seder, either of those come back, we'll pick it. Inferno Titan's the best card in this pack, kind of not remotely. It's also quite good against us, so I'm, I'm nervous, but we're not going to hate draft it over a, a really sweet card like Jiraga Tree Speaker. All right, here's more stuff for us to ramp into. This is a good pack for us. There's a Johnny Vengeant, which if we keep the splash alive, we will play for sure. Um, but there's also a Deranged Hermit and a Woodfall Primus. Um, again, with the tokens. Man, I really like Deranged Hermit. Yeah, I'm just going to play Deranged Hermit. It's a really good target for, for Genesis Wave, that kind of thing. Here's Flicker Wisp or Wall of Omens. Even Winter Orb is something that we could absolutely consider running in a deck like this. We have Worn Power Stone, Pristine Talisman. We've got three Mana Elves. Um, and we've got a Gilded Lotus at the top here too. I'm going to hide Chroma for now. I mean, we could definitely consider Winter Orbing. Uh, the problem is you want to get ahead and then Winter Orb. And we're really ahead over here in the later stage. So I think I, I want to just take like a Flicker Wisp here and just try to get some value. Man, another Titan. All right, so Kasali Pride Mage, Awakening Zone, Baneslayer, all awesome. Probably just going to Awakening Zone because of two reasons. The first one is... Uh, it's a great spell for, you know, sort of setting up a bit of a defense going long game and then blasting off one of our huge X spells down here. The other reason is because I have an unnatural love for this card, and I'm, that's why I'm going to take it. Pride Mage, eh, maybe even a little bit better in this deck, but whenever. I'm not going to sweat the, the real minor details. All right, Spear came back. Windmilling that one. Willbot, you may. And you may not. I'll have to explain that to him in a second. You can only be in one clan at a time on Magic Online. That's why I did that. Um, Rootbound Craig, Tooth and Nail, Apocrysite. God, I could take Tooth and Nail. I just feel like we have so much to do with our with our big mana already. Rootbound Craig makes this red splash basically free. Uh, I'll panic pick a Rootbound Craig there. I don't know if that was correct. All right, so all of our choices came back again. Obstinate Baloth, Fleece Main Lion, Ranger of Eos. Ranger now has four different targets. That's probably just worth running on its own, but Obstinate Baloth is so good against some decks, I feel like I actually just want that. I can't believe I'm passing up card advantage of that level, but I feel like it's correct. I'll take eight and a half tails. Are you kidding me? I guess nobody's in red. I'm pretty happy about this. Card is incredibly good even in the cube i'm going to take the relic water though because again i don't think that it's correct to, to just cut cards for the sake of cutting cards i think it's much better option <laughs> all right well i feel really good that we're in the right colors um but yeah I, anyway what i was saying is i don't think it's correct to cut cards i'm going to cut this lotus bloom um just to cut them I think that you should, like, if there's a card you might play, which Relic Warder is absolutely a card that we might play, then I think you just take it. All right. I don't know what this deck looks like yet, um, so let's figure it out. Soldier of the Pantheon's a maybe, but this these elves are in zone. Baloth, Slimeball. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 
Talisman, Power Stone, Lotus, Chalice. These are all in. Oh, man. We're going to try to go super deep here, kids. This is the X spell deck. Look at this. Boom, boom. The big boys. Uh, Amiri Angel, Elspeth, Geddon, Spear, Wisp. Yes, yes. And then I don't think we want any of these in the main. That's 24, actually. Wow, that worked out pretty nicely, I think. Um, so what cards are we missing right now? Uh, our two splash cards are kind of the the, the most obvious ones. Uh, I don't I don't want to main deck Ratchet Bomb. Winter Orb still does could absolutely have a place in this deck. Oh, Will bought a machine. So. I like it that we have these three we have these three red splashes that are all basically free. Aurelia's Fury. Man, I feel like I want to try this card. Uh, I'm trying to talk myself out of splashing the red, but geez. If it doesn't go in this deck, where in the world does it go? It's just our mana's pretty rough. Double white, double white, double white. Triple white down here, triple green down here. Though I, I really do feel like these are just three forests in our deck. Yeah. Well, this one's a plains, but. All right. So let's say that we're going to try this card out and let's see where this puts us. So we've got ramp, 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 ramp. Wow. This added up quickly. So we've got all these cards for ramping. Not too bad. And then we've got these things to sort of hold down the fort while we're gone. I think even Mind Sensor is probably a card that we don't need. We can bring it in and out of the board, no problem. So if we take that out. I'm glad we picked up these two. These are really key for us. Remember, Decree can also just be this, just cycles or cycle for one mana or whatever. These are sort of our big finishers. I could also just run it on 16 lands pretty easily here. I mean, we've got so many mana sources in this deck. That's why I'm really hesitant to, to cut anything on the top end. And the whole point of the deck is to do this for a billion because it should hit basically everything. Let's see, what doesn't it hit? It doesn't hit plow. Hits all of these, not this. So these are the only cards it doesn't, doesn't hit. Let's see what a Blood Braid would do in this deck. Let's see, it would hit this for nothing, so that's a brick. These are all fine. This is probably fine. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Yeah, so it hits pretty much everything is good. It's just it, it bricks off. Oh, no, wait a minute. What about down here? Converted mana cost. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. This one it doesn't hit. But, yeah, we can't run Blood Braid. Um, let's see here. <laughs> this is the big payoff. So I don't want to mess with that too much. Could cut Spear, but I think it's actually pretty good in a deck like this. What does this do again? Flying First Strike Vision of Trample Haste. It beats down, but it doesn't have lifelink, so... It's not one of those cards that you can play and just stabilize immediately, which makes me a little nervous. Flicker Wisp isn't exactly abusive in our deck. It's just so often that you can find something sweet to do with it. I guess we can cut it, though. All right. Got to think big here, right? All right, let's see what this gives us here. So this is two, three, four, five, six. No, no, 
seven green sources and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Why does this feel weird? Oh, because it's missing a land. Let's see, that's not something's something's off here. Something was off. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight green sources, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine white. Yeah, it seems fine to me. All right. Let's see what our super ramp deck can do. These are the key. <laughs> 